Hey folks, I thought I'd film another tutorial video uh, regarding VTTs, virtual tabletops for Dungeons & Dragons. I've been doing a lot of uh, work on modules recently, uh, pre-made adventures from D&D &D for my campaign, and trying to bring in maps from those modules is a bit of a task. Um, so I thought I'd maybe just show you what I've figured out uh, uh, what to do to uh, to do this so that it's actually fairly good resolution. Some of you might be interested in doing that. Uh, just know that you do require a PDF of whatever you're trying to uh, make a, into a map. You can buy them off of uh, DM's Guild or whatever, uh, D&D Beyond even. Um, so I'm going to be actually using a map from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, at the back of the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's a couple of maps there for Dungeon Masters. And I actually have a PDF of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, so I've decided to do, uh, I believe it's this map here, which is actually a pretty big map. But if you look at it, it's, it's relatively small when it comes to the size of the squares, you know, for a regular map, which represent five feet by five feet. So I thought, I'd show you what I what I do for that. Now the first thing you need to do is get a, a page from the PDF printed it as a PDF. I like to use Cute PDF to do that. It's just a free PDF software that allows me to print off specific pages or whatever. Uh, so I've already done that. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to grab that file. So. You're going to grab that file and you're going to drag it into GIMP. So you also need GIMP, which is a free Photoshop or photo editing software that you can get online. Um, I already have GIMP la uh, launched here, so let me just transition to that screen. Um, I'll put myself in there too. Yeah, so I already have GIMP launched here. And I'm just gonna, all I'm gonna do is drag and drop the PDF file of the page into GIMP. Now I'm gonna show you how to import it in a couple of different ways. Uh, this is the window that opens up when you try to import a um, PDF. And you'll notice down here that I have the resolution set at 500. So I'm actually gonna drop it down to what the um, default is, which is 100, and I'm gonna import that. So that's the import for that one. Now I'm gonna create a new page because I wanna show you what I discovered. I don't know why the background turns different color there, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna import the same file again, but this time I'm gonna change it to what it was, which is what I've decided is like the maximum I kind of wanna get my resolution in. You'll notice the width of the pixels is like almost 4,300 and then it's 5,500. You're getting to about the max of um, the VTT uh, that I use as ability for having background pictures, which is uh, Foundry VTT. I know a lot of people use Roll20 or um, uh, Fantasy Grounds. There's probably some others, but I've really started liking Fa Foundry as my main uh, VTT. And uh, if I click on import at 500, I'm gonna show you the difference. Now, first of all, it's not gonna fit perfectly. You can see that it's actually quite big compared to that layout. But if I go to um, image, and I click on Fit Canvas to Layers. So once again, that's Image and Fit Canvas to Layers. Um, that'll do exactly what it says. It'll fit the canvas to the layer. So I'm just gonna zoom out with the minus button here a little bit. And I want you to see if I zoom in to the secret door or secret passage here, like I'm zoomed in pretty close at this point. That would be probably the size that my players would wanna zoom in on but look at the 100 pixel per inch version. If I zoom into the same area and just compare the two, like this one's smaller uh, than this one is. So I'm zoomed in even more. Like if I zoom out, maybe try to get the same size approximately here. Like look at the resolution difference, right? You can clearly see the S's here. The S's here are very pixelated. So by importing it with a higher resolution, uh, you can get a much better picture for your VTT. So I'm actually gonna just get rid of that first one. 
and we'll just work on this one and I'm just going to show you a few things. So the first thing I like to do is I like to show the grid. Now this grid can be changed. There are options if you go to configure grid. Um, so configure grid is under image. Okay, configure grid. Um, usually you want to have 100 by 100 pixels which seems to be the standard for VTTs. Okay. Um, everything else I basically leave standard. Uh, I don't even remember if I changed these. They might have been, I can't remember what the values were originally, but now that I've changed them to 100 by 100, that seems to be the um, standard or the default, I should say. So what I like to do now is I like to kind of move my image to check to see if the grid um, falls on the, uh, the grid size that's already there. Sometimes when I take pages out of modules, I have to scale the picture a little bit so that it actually fits the grid. And you want to fit the grid here because when you import it into the VTT, if it doesn't have a perfectly square shape, it can get pretty complicated to try to fit the VTT's grid to the image's grid. So um, I'm going to select the movement tool here. And I'm already on the layer that has the picture, which is seen over here. These are the layers. Okay, so there's the background layer and then there's the actual picture layer. So if I grab that picture and move it, if you have a faster computer than mine, it'll probably work better. You can see that I'm, I'm lining up the squares somewhat in the middle of the picture here, and they're not lining up properly, right? They are lining up, sorry, they are lining up properly in the middle. And you can use your arrow keys if you want a finer mo movement. Okay, so I've got this, I'm just looking at this middle picture here, this middle square right here, and you can see that it's already drifting off. So there's a problem with the sizing. So to fix that, if you go up here and left click and hold on this tool in the toolbar, you get a whole bunch of different tools that come up. And the one that we want is scale. So I'm just going to click on scale. And if I click on the image now, there's these little handles that come up. So what I usually do is I focus on the left right first, and then I'll go and do the up down if I need to. And you do usually have to scale from both sides because it scales towards the center. So um, sometimes you have to scale out. I think I have to scale in. Let's see here. Sometimes you have to go in a couple of squares deep. Seems to be getting closer. Let's go a little bit higher. Okay, looks like I might have found it here. I'm going to go to the bottom. There we go. I think I found it. Yeah, I think everything's lining up now. So you can see that it takes a little bit of playing around to try to figure out the right um, scaling. But you definitely want to do this here. It's much easier to do it here than it is to do it within at least Foundry. And now I'm just going to go back to image and uh, fit the canvas to layer again. Uh, and I'm going to zoom out. Now you'll notice that the grid no longer fits, but that's okay um, because I'm going to crop it at this point. So if I use the crop tool, I just want to have this map here. I don't want to have all the white. I don't care if I crop off some of the edge, edge textures and stuff. And then I'm going to fit canvas to layer again. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I forgot to crop it. Let me try that again. Once you select the crop tool, you have to actually click on it in the middle. Ah, there we go. So you can see that it went transparent on the outside. And so now I can fit canvas to layer. So now it's done that. So the grid isn't gonna fit anymore, but it is scaled properly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to export this, not save. Okay, so we're gonna export it and I'll put it in my Documents folder under role playing.
Okay, so I've uh, exported that as a JPEG. Um, in GIMP, you can just select what you want to export it as and um, change the um, extension to tell you to tell the software what kind of image you want. JPEGs will have some sort of compression. It'll ask you what kind of quality you want. Um, now, one of the things, let me get rid of the grid here. So if I zoom in, one of the problems with these maps is that you see like the dungeon master wants to know where the secret doors are, but you don't want your players to know where the traps and secret doors are and, and different features of the map are. So, and they're all explained down here. Um, so what happens if you want to get rid of that and not have your players see it? Well, it, it does get a little bit tricky, but what I do is I'm going to copy and paste tiles that are next to the tile that I'm trying to hide. So I'll show you what I mean. If I go to the selection tool here and I just copy the bottom half of this tile up to about there, I'm going to go control C and control V and then I can drag this over and cover that S part. And you can use your arrow tools to get the black line lined up as well as you can. And then when you click, you see the little anchor beside my cursor there. If I click, it's going to anchor that image down and I've covered the S and in the tabletop, um, uh, virtual tabletop, I'm going to put walls down so the players won't be able to see through there anyway, but that's still not the best thing. I mean, it kind of looks like the players could probably see that there's something covered there. So one trick I use is I use the smudge tool. So that's the little finger tool up here. And you can change the size of that by going to size right here. And I'll just bring it down to maybe 35. And if you smudge a little bit just by clicking, you're basically going to get the tile to like blur a little bit and blend into its surroundings, right? Um, you can almost get rid of the S that way too, but I find that's a little bit too much. So I'm actually going to undo that smudging right there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select again, um, you know, just a bit of the color of the tile below here. And if I take a little bit of the line, it helps me line things up when I'm lining it up against the wall. So like so. Again, anchor it down. And then I would use the smudge tool to mix that in with the colors around the side. See, that side is a little bit darker, so I'm going to bring that darker side in. And I'm just clicking and letting go and smudging around just to get it to blend in a little bit better. And I mean, most players won't notice that effect right there. You might be saying, but yeah, but they might still see that part. Sure. So what I'll do is I'm going to select bit of the wall right next to the S trying to make it just so that it's going to be able to cover that S there. I'm going to copy that and paste it. I'm going to drag that over, anchor it, paste it, drag it over, anchor it, paste it, drag it over like so. And then if I go back to the smudge tool, now it might be a little bit too big. So I'm just going to reduce the size again. You can also click to reduce it. And then if I smudge over that, now you basically can't tell that there was anything there. Um, and that, and I would do that for any, any of these. The, the ones on the walls are the hardest ones. If they're right in the middle of a tile, you can just basically cover it with cup, copy and paste another tile and cover it completely. Um, but I just showed you one of the more difficult ones. And like I said, if you didn't know, especially if you zoom out a little bit, like you don't know that there was a secret door there anymore. So here's a, here's an example where you could do the whole tile. So let me zoom into that middle mouse button to move it over. So I could just grab the tile right next to it here. We'll copy that, paste it, move it over. line up the lines. You can use your arrow keys to get a little bit more fine lining up. 
and anchor it down. Now there's a little bit of an issue with the black line here. You could copy that black line and, and drag it down, but I would probably just leave it like that. Like I said, your players are probably not gonna notice that um, unless they're really, really looking for it. So, um, so that's basically what I would do for that. So if I zoom out, I'm just going to save it. Uh, I'll uh, export it over top of the original file that I had there. And now I'll show you how I can bring that into my virtual tabletop. So I already have Foundry uh, running here. Uh, and this was a previous map that I had done from another module. But uh, so let's say I'm just going to close this and I want to bring in another scene. So I'm going to create a scene. I'm going to call it test labyrinth. How do you spell it? Labyrinth. There we go. And then in this program, the way you bring in a, a background picture is you click on file path right here. And um, so these are some of the ones I had done before. And what I do for, for, for this software is I s click on choose file, which means go get the file from my PC and bring it into here as its own file. So I'll do that right now. There's the labyrinth. Oh, sorry, I picked the wrong one. I picked the J the original PDF instead of the JPEG. That's the one I want. So it's saved it to the correct area that I have designated for these maps. I'm gonna select that file. I'm gonna save the changes. And now I have my test labyrinth here. Um, it's actually here. Let me bring it over there. Oh, there it is. So if I click on that, I'm going to zoom out. And we now have to line up the grid of the VTT with the grid of this map. So let me just close my compendium there. Uh, to do that in this software, uh, you double click on the scene. You go to the ruler or grid configuration tool right here. And then you can actually see the grid of the VTT. Okay, so now that I properly scaled the map, um, you'll see that if I line it up with the lines, that now all of the lines match. You might not be perfect, but it should be pretty close all the way down. So just make sure to properly scale it and hit the scale button in GIMP, which I forgot to do originally. And now it pretty much lines up properly with everything. I'm going to commit the changes. I'm going to save this and now if I bring a character onto the map that character will move. There's no wall set up yet but the character will move following the grid properly and like I said when you get to this point here this is where the secret door was that I got rid of. You can't really tell that there was a secret door there. I mean even if you zoom in uh, the lighting isn't great on this particular uh, character's vision, but still, that's that does a pretty good job. Okay, so that's how I bring in maps from a module. Uh, there's a little bit of work to do to clean up some of these little things here. Here's the other one that I cleaned up, right? The secret door here, so you can't really see the secret door. But uh, yeah, that's what I do. So hopefully that helps you with some of your uh, module to VTT conversions uh, for maps and uh, if you have any questions let me know.